So different tendencies on the market. The volume is there. The volume of what's transacting right now is really strong, meaning that we have strong buyers, mostly family offices, either keeping the assets on the long term, buying in a market that's controlled, using the MLI Select program, and using that dry powder to buy buildings well located. Hi, this is Terry Samlal from PMML. Today I want to present you market statistics for multifamily in the province of Quebec for August 2023. So we're in a context where, uh, you know, in the province of Quebec with the uh, regulated rents, uh, we were able to increase the rents importantly this year and most of the rent increases in Quebec are done around the 1st of July. That's where we usually um, extend our leases for another year. Uh, so we've had uh, increases in average between 2.5 to 4.5 percent in average, but certain owners uh, that are interviewed were able to increase their rents of 10 percent, depending on if they were in the city where the municipal taxes had increased importantly. And uh, other uh, landlords were able to increase between 10 and 15 percent simply by refurbishing lightly the units aesthetically and just paint, you know, a simple paint job, some floor changes, uh, a toilet here, a fan there, and they were able to increase the 10 to 15%. That doesn't take into consideration um, the units that were freed up and uh, owners that did uh, major refurbs. So fundamentals right now are very strong in the market. Although interest rates are high, we're seeing that the capacity to increase rents in the province of Quebec is high. What you have to consider is that uh, 35, in average, 35 to 40% of revenues generated by uh, a, a, um, a couple or an individual renting a unit is um, applied against housing and, and rental costs, et cetera. And that's low compared to other provinces in, the, in Canada. For example, if you're comparing our average um, revenue per person here, per capita, uh, in, in Montreal, in the GMA, it's about $10,000 less per year compared to what we're seeing in Toronto. So, something's up here. What I want to say is our capacity to increase the rents in Quebec is extremely strong. Immigration is back and is strong. More and more people are going towards tenantship compared to ownership. And that's accelerating uh, drastically over time. So, so that, those fundamentals are strong and we're seeing it reflected into uh, sales, sales val volume and sales values. So in the context where the interest rates are higher now, the, of course, the number of transactions has sunk uh, drastically. We've lost about 50% volume in the past year. If we're looking at units that are below 24 uh, unit uh, sizes and doors, we're seeing an average price per door at about 198,000 for the GMA, which is about $6,000 more per door than what we were seeing one year ago, although cap rates have compressed all the way down to say about 4.10 right now in that asset range. So interesting to see that what's being sold right now is a little bit more renovated, refurbished, but prices per door are still on the increasing, if you like. Uh, for going in the 50 door and above category, and we're going into concrete because that's usually what people like me to talk about, uh, cap rates are compressing right now, so we're going in the lower threes, although I, I would be surprised to see what's coming out transactionally speaking, because most transactions right now are uh, have gone through due, due diligence, but, but are in the financing mode. Um, we're seeing the average price per door maintaining around $226,000 per door for concrete assets on the island of Montreal. And that's exactly the same pricing that we had a year ago. So the difference that we have between a year ago and now is that cap rates are compressing. So we're, people are buying uh, buildings that, are, are, that have less return than they used to have a year ago. Um, so, so that's interesting to see that that's what's happening right now. Let's talk about transactions. Uh, Capri does continue selling assets on the market right now. So uh, we have the Deguerre asset, uh, the last Deguerre asset, the three, there was three buildings for that, that were sold, and this last one notarized for $181,000 per door. So imagine a concrete asset uh, on a strip where there's, there's uh, three uh, concrete buildings sitting on the same underground structural garage with a, a main floor, which is uh, semi-commercial. This is what we're talking about here. 
And uh, this building sold for $181,000 per door that was, it was purchased by a private equity firm um, at $32,500,000. So, so that transaction is continuing and in the sense that that's another comparable maintaining the market value at about 180,000 per door on that in that area. Although in Saint Laurent, we've seen transactions go up to about 225,000 per door uh, easily in that. So there, there's still an upscale possible here in price per door, uh, but there's also an upscale possible in the capacity to increase the rents by, by changing the signature of the building. Uh, we know that Caprit right now is is redirecting his attention towards newer assets and other markets. Um, if we're continuing in the Caprit, I'm going to bring you now to uh, in the Caprit uh, transactions. I'm, I'm going to bring you to the South Shore of Montreal. For those who know Greenfield Park, Saint Lambert for for is more of a, an area that's known, which is right across the street from this asset. Um, it, it's an upper scale area where usually we have older uh, clientele, mostly English speaking. And this transaction took place on Victoria. Um, beautiful view in front of the building on one side, giving on, on the golf course. 1972 asset, concrete, 73 units, sold for 173000 per door for a concrete asset, which is pretty interesting if you're considering the fact that the average on, on the south shore of Montreal and that immediate area is around 165000 per door for brick and wood assets. So a nice transaction uh, sold from Caprit directly to a family office um, that has some partners from time to time, but that, that's really um, the family office really controls its own transactions. Um, people I appreciate very much. Congratulations for this sale, 173000 per door. I'm pretty sure they're going to bring the, the asset up in value. And in a couple of years, this asset's going to explode in price per door. Now, uh, I'm, going to, I'm not going to talk about Montreal this much uh, this, this month because there's major transactions taking place right now outside of Montreal. Uh, but I, I do want to say that the GMA has maintained its values. And if we're going in the, uh, in the Quebec City region, we've, we're maintaining values there. Gatineau also, uh, Sherbrooke also, and Tree Rivers also. Gatineau, there's a lot of high rises that are going to be built in the next few months. And uh, Quebec City, we've done a lot of transactions in the past months, and, and that, that territory has shown that it could maintain its value over time. Um, but the attention now has to be brought into uh, South Shore of Montreal and Longueuil. Uh, in the past few months, we had major transactions take place. We had a, a 740-something door sold uh, in the past uh, two months in Longueuil. It sold per, a high price per door, but this one here, this transaction that just took place is really uh, changing uh, the way we're going to see the South Shore of Montreal. Uh, we're talking about several buildings, uh, four 16 plexes and three 32 plexes, all located on the same grounds, um, close to Chemin Chambly, close to the St. Hubert Airport, for those who know it, that's being completely redeveloped right now with uh, Molson that's been uh, that's put its uh, brewery in, on the airport site and uh, a major industrial repositioning on the uh, St. Hubert airport site right now that that's creating a lot of value around it and here we have a transaction that took place between 232 and 239 thousand dollars per door which is a historic uh, breakthrough for that area uh, considering that the average price per door in Longueuil is $165,000 per door for the same asset category. Um, the seller is, is, we could call it a family office, but more or less, uh, you know, we, we're taking um, a lot of the, uh, of the transactions taking place in Longueuil right now are, are not made by family offices. So it's nice to see that we have a family office coming into the market. Uh, with these prices per door, uh, what is certain is that the previous owner that bought it, that I know very well, uh, gave asset uh, value to the uh, to the building, upscaled it, and now through the MLI Select program is permitting a buyer to buy at such a high price per door. And that's where financing makes the whole difference. And that's when you're seeing that price per door does not necessarily make a big difference these days. Uh, difference these days and, and multiplication factors don't make a big difference these days once you could bring the asset to the next level 
And the family offices, the way they think is that they want to put as less money possible in the deal, but detain it as long as they can. And that's the thinking behind a, a transaction that took place between 232,000 and 239,000 per door, which is a historic mark in Longueuil. And mark my words, that this transaction is going to change the market. Let's go to Sherbrooke, a uni- uh, learning city. Here we have a transaction, a 56 unit that took place between two private investors um, in the Les Nations area. Uh, what you have to know here, and I want to talk about digits. I don't necessarily use, usually do my, my, uh, my pitch around digits here, but this transaction took place at $88,000 per door in an area where the average is between 100 and 105,000 per door. So we're way lower than the average. But look at my multiplication factors. First of all, the expense ratio on this building is 50%. It, the expense to income ratio is 50%. The cap rate is 4.4. The gross multiplier, uh, income multiplier here is 11.2. So what does that mean? That means that the purchaser is buying a building at a low price per door, probably working off the fact that he has a 50% expect, expense ratio, but his building theoretically is worth somewhere between 100 and 105,000 per door only if he optimizes the expenses on it without even optimizing the income on it. So that means there's a huge upscale in, in, in rents, in the net revenue here that is possible in, in this asset on the market, considering that the buyer is purchasing at the, the asset at 4.4 cap rate. So if you're only looking at the cap rate, you're, you're gonna mistake your, your, um, your planification on the market. So you have to look at not the price per door, not the cap rate, not the gross income multiplier, although here it's obvious that the buyer is doing a great deal and is going to bring the, the asset to the next level. But what, where can you bring this asset in a province where fundamentals are strong and where the capacity to increase the rents is still very, very strong? So I'll be following this transaction through time and, and maybe in two, three, four, five years, tell you what price the, uh, the seller is, the buyer is gonna resell this asset at. A last transaction, and the reason why I'm showing you these transactions is I'm showing you transactions taking place at very, very high price per door, but also lower than market also. So you have two tendencies on the market, but all of the buyers have the same strategy, and the strategy is to say, where can I bring my asset over time? So let's bring you to Montreal. I want one transaction in Montreal, 54 unit, 1968 construction, took place at $105,000 per door, which is very, very low for the, mar- for the Montreal market. Here we have a compulsive buyer, um, somebody that's been in the market for a very, very long time that knows how to negotiate its deals. Often there's no broker involved in, in these transactions. And um, this one took place at $105,000 per door. And this buyer bought about 100 doors in the past months. So what he does is he purchases and he resells these assets over time, and that's his business. Detaining assets is not necessarily interesting for him. Uh, going in and out and closing deals and, and, and locking in the value of an asset and, and the prime that you could get for an asset in a controlled market is what is, is, is what is interesting here for this uh, purchaser. And he's probably gonna be reselling that asset at a, at a very high price per door. So different tendencies on the market. The volume is there. The volume of what's transacting right now is really strong, meaning that we have strong buyers, mostly family offices, either keeping the assets on the long term, buying in a market that's controlled, using the MLI Select program, and using that dry powder to buy buildings well located across the province of Quebec. So I'll be glad to to, uh, speak to you again uh, in September for our fourth quarter in a multifamily market, which is really booming, although the volume has greatly decreased. So have a lot of success in your businesses and I'll see you next month. Take care.